there, welcome back to Colour With Me. Don't forget to download and print the picture from the link in the comments below. The video will be broken down into easy to follow steps with opportunities to pause the video whilst you complete each step. Today we'll be working on the Mad Scientist Bear using complementary colours. Complementary colours are colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel on each side of your picture. So red and orange, yellow and green, blue and purple and pink and red are all complementary colours. Now, let's get started. Step 1 If you've watched any of the other Colour With Me videos, you'll know by now that step 1 is all about adding fur to our bear before we start colouring. For this, I'm going to use a black ballpoint pen and add some scribbles to his face and hands. Don't forget to stay inside of the lines when you do this. Step 2 First of all, we're going to colour the bear and the lenses of his goggles. For this, I'm going to use art markers and sharpies, with a basic light blue for the goggles, a light brown for the bear and a light grey for his crazy hair. Try to carefully go around the edges of each section before you colour in the middle. This should help you to stay inside the lines and make your picture nice and neat. Now for his nose, I'll be using a dark grey for this. <laughs> Step 3 Next I'm going to use red, orange and yellow to colour the explosion from the test tubes. I'll be using the lightest colour, yellow, around the outside of the explosion and for the sparks. Then I'll use the mid colour, orange, in the middle and finally the darkest colour, red, in the centre. As you can see from the colour wheel, these three colours sit well together and are perfect for an explosion. Step 4 I'm going to use pink and purple for the liquids in the test tubes in the bear's hands. If you have it, try using a darker purple for the mixture in the beaker. If you don't have another shade, try colouring it in pink first and then purple. Do it in this order so that the purple pen doesn't corrupt the pink one. To make things easier, I'm going to select a light blue to use on all of the test tubes, bottles and beakers in the picture. Step 5 I'll be working on the bottles in the bottom right hand corner. I'll start by using blues and greens in the front bottle, making the liquid and bubbles light and dark blue and the smoke different shades of green. For the bottle next to it, I'll use blue and purple stripes. For the last two bottles in that area, I'll just use a shade of blue for the liquid as they're hiding in the background. Mm-hmm. 
Step 6. Now for the bottles and potions on the bottom left hand corner of the picture. Here I'll be using reds, oranges and yellows. This is going to work really well as they go well together but will also be the opposite of the blues, greens and purples on the right hand side. Don't forget to colour the rest of the bottle a light blue. Step 7. You'll need three shades of blue to colour in the gas flames in the foreground and background. Don't worry if you don't have three, you can always use a purple instead. Starting in the centre of each flame, use the darkest blue or purple, using the mid blue for the middle and the light blue for the outside. <laughs> Step 8. For the bottles on the top shelf in the right hand corner I'm going to use a selection of pinks and purples. On the middle shelf I'll use blues and greens and on the bottom shelf reds, pinks and purples. Don't forget to fill out the rest of the bottles in light blue. Step 9. There's an awful lot of smoke in the background. I'm not really sure this guy's a very good scientist. Anyway, I have three shades of grey for the smoke. I'll be using the lighter shades for the clouds of smoke in the foreground, with the darker shade at the back. There are also smoke clouds on the right hand side. As there are only two beakers left, I'll use red and pink for these. Step 10. This one seems nice and easy but can be a little bit awkward and time consuming. Using a lighter shade of brown to colour all of the lids, shelves and workbench, take your time with this step as there are quite a few objects to colour around. Take it easy and go around all of the edges first. This can take some time but the results will be worth it. We're nearly finished so it would be a shame to rush it now. Thank <laughs> you.
Step 11. Now for the metal work stands and Bunsen burners. I'm going to use a light grey. These are the last details we will colour before we move on to the background, so make sure not to miss any of the smaller details out. Step 12. Finally the background. You can leave it white if you like but I'm going to colour it black. This will make the whole picture pop. Like step 10 it can be a little bit fiddly as there are so many objects to draw around. Again, take your time, it will be worth the effort you put in. Just to finish off, I'm going to colour his goggles a mid blue. Step 13. This step is optional. You can leave your picture as it is, as we have now completed the whole piece. However, if you're feeling adventurous, you could add some shading to make your picture really pop and impress your friends. You will need a dark grey pen to do this. Try to imagine that the light is shining in from the top right hand side of the picture. If this was the case, the shadows would mainly be on the left hand side and underneath the bear and objects in the background. For the shading, try to follow the shapes and curves of the black picture outlines. The shading doesn't need to be very wide as it's just a suggestion of shape and light. For this step, it's a good idea to watch it a few times before you follow along. And that's our picture finished. Thank you for joining in with Colour With Me. Please like, subscribe and leave a comment. I'd love to know how you got on with today's picture. See you again soon for another Colour With Me.